All right then. So um, just a little bit of an overview of Foundation Studies, first of all. Foundation Studies is post-16 provision at East Durham College. Um, and at the moment, we have around about 130 learners accessing Foundation Studies across two sites. Um, and those two sites offer slightly different provisions um, depending on the interests and um, the kind of skills and needs of the young person that wants to access Foundation Studies. Uh, first of all, we have Foundation Studies at Hoffel Campus. So that is uh, just about a quarter of a mile outside the actual city centre of Durham, um, based on an absolutely huge and stunning um, working form campus. Um, so in a, kind of an old form based college that has been brought into the modern day and is kind of keep being renovated in, in line with modern expectations, just about to go undergo a fantastic modernisation scheme which makes it a really exciting campus to be at at the moment um, with state-of-the-art facilities and, as I say, a fully operational form. And when you come to what provision looks like at Hoffel in just a few slides time, um, and in contrast with that is our Pete Lee campus at Willoughby Grove, uh, which very much is your um, traditional uh, college environment, um, with, which you're probably more familiar with than the kind of Hoffel setup. Um, and again, offers something a little bit different in, re in relation to Hoffel. Uh, so depending on your young person, I know we've chatted in the chat function on Teams, despite the technical issues. And a few of you have said you're, you're really interested in animal care um, and a few others in sport as well. So I'd be recommending that you access a different campus based upon uh, the interest that your young person has. And I'll come to that in more detail in a second. So uh, just a little bit about why we exist and um, the purpose of Foundation Studies provision at East Durham College. So of those 130 students that we have, uh, it sounds so cliche to say, but not one of them is the same. All right. Um, for a variety of different reasons, because of their experiences, uh, because of their support needs, because of their strengths, their weakness, their interests, their likes, their dislikes. So what we try and do is offer as much choice as possible but choice within um, the context of something that is relevant to progression, so to young people developing their education and broader skills, um, and also develop their independence, all right? So in general, uh, the purpose, you know, a little bit of a kind of purpose statement for us here, a little bit of a, um, hopefully giving you a flavour as to what we're about. So Foundation Studies at Eastern College is post-16 further education for young people and young adults. So it's not just kind of 16 to 18. We do, we can offer provision um, up until um, kind of young adulthood, depending on eligibility and certain criteria, which I'll go into in more detail if that applies to yourself. Um, so it's post-16 further education for young people and young adults for whom a mainstream post-16 education is not the best option for them at this time. And um, that's really got to be asterisked. Um, because that's not to say that um, the young people within our provision won't progress to mainstream environments and higher level programs. Um, in fact, I would I would you know say that is that is a large part of my job to to help uh, our young people get to a mainstream environment if they do want to develop their skills, knowledge, and abilities within a college environment. Um, but also, it may well be you know for some students, a mainstream environment will never be you know possible because of potentially intimate care needs or the level of support they need or maybe social, emotional, mental health issues. Um, so my kind of job and the reason we exist as a department is to give young people for whom mainstream education isn't the most appropriate move at this time, the opportunity to develop their skills, knowledge and abilities in a really inclusive, supportive, but also a really challenging environment. All right. What one thing that um, my department and my team, one thing we really try and do Yes, we're going to support young people with with the special educational needs, disabilities and, and challenges in their life. But what we really want to do is we really want to still have those same same high, you know, really ambitious expectations. We want to see them make progress. We want them to make the small incremental steps throughout their lives within the course of a term, a half term, a year, five years, three years, two years. And what we want to see is that uh, your young person or you, if you're a young person watching this, that you coming to us and studying with us has been useful to develop and improve uh, your overall skills, um, but also very specific skills, which may relate to animal care or sport or media or dance or drama. And I'm going to come to the provision offer in just a second. So what does uh, a foundation study student look like? Who are they? Uh, how can you describe them? And I'm going to do a bit of a cop out here and say that I can't. All right. Every student is different. 
Um, but what I can do is kind of try and umbrella the kinds of needs and challenges that we have within the department and um, kind of, you know, almost kind of categorize the, the, the types of young people that we have. So um, some of our young people have mild to moderate to severe learning difficulties. Now that might be things like um, dys dyslexia, um, dyscalculia, cognition and processing challenges and issues, um, issues around um, understanding speech and language and communication. All right. Um, and again, I, I hope you can appreciate that, that it wouldn't be appropriate for me to go in abs into absolute specifics um, regarding our young people. Um, alongside that, um, you know, a large portion of our young people do have formal diagnosed special educational needs, um, which are documented in formal education and health care plans or HCPs for short, um, in partnership with local authority services and wider um, health and social care services. Um, now, that could be everything from um, young people with um, you know, mosaic syndrome or Down syndrome or those kind of needs. So young people who may have um, autistic spectrum uh, condition or uh, may, may be on the autistic spectrum in a variety of different ways. Um, they may have some more complex health needs. Um, so they may have um, physical challenges such as cystic fibrosis um, or um, a range of, of physical impairments. Um, so issues with eyesight, issues with uh, hearing impairments um, or issues around physical mobility. All right. Um, and again, you know, I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding individual students and individual needs. Um, but that would be kind of the second category that our students may fall into. And what I will say is that, you know, we, we, we may have a student or you may be a student or your young person may be a student for whom you think fits into all of these kind of little categories. And that, again, is absolutely fine. Um, the, th the kind of third little bubble um, is young people who may not have any formal special educational needs or um, disabilities or learning difficulties or challenges, but for whatever reason, um, they have just had a, a pretty terrible time in primary and, and secondary education. Um, you know, they may not have attended. Um, they may have found it difficult to attend for a range of issues. They may have had to change schools quite often. Um, their behaviour may have resulted in them being excluded um, or sent to alternative provision. Um, and so we, we do have we do have young people um, who, who do fall into that category um, for whom their, their progress has been restricted and that should be restricted, not been uh, restricted. So that's a teaching faux pas there. I can only apologise. Uh, the next little group is uh, young people who have potentially a range of social, emotional and mental health issues. Um, these may or may not be uh, formally diagnosed. So that's everything from anxiety, social anxiety, uh, depression, uh, bipolar, um, uh, things that cause them, cause their minds and cause their emotions, um, anger management issues. Um, that always sounds more dramatic than, than it actually is um, and always sounds a little bit more dangerous than it actually is. But young people for whom regulating their emotions and regulating their relationships and understanding relationships um, is a challenge and therefore would, would find um, existing in a mainstream environment with individuals who don't have those um, challenges who would find those those difficult and problematic um, and again what we want to try and do is when a young person is with us we want to try and encourage them not just to learn about the subject that they're interested in whether it be animal care or agriculture or sport or media etc um, but also we want to we want to try and encourage them to develop coping strategies um, strategies that are going to help them to um, to understand their own needs and to be able to deal with those and progress into that mainstream environment employment or independent living um, or the world of work or volunteering a real broad um, kind of ambitious uh, goal for, for, for each of our young people. The next group, um, young people for whom life has been a bit tough. Maybe they've had turbulent experiences, um, potentially they've experienced the breakdown of, of, of families, um, of their home. Um, they are potentially in the care of, of someone who uh, perhaps isn't their immediate biological family and therefore that can provide kind of difficult challenges in terms of education, uh, engaging them in education. Um, it could be more kind of serious and severe lived experiences um, where our young people have sometimes you know, been victims of, of, of harm, abuse or neglect and therefore their educational development hasn't, hasn't quite kind of went along what we would expect as a, as a, as a kind of standard trajectory for a, for a young person at the age of 16, 17, 18, 19 and beyond. 
And then uh, kind of the, the final little kind of group, the little bubble that I want to talk about is uh, young people for who may have applied for a mainstream program. So mainstream animal care, mainstream agriculture, mainstream floristry, uh, arboriculture, or mainstream performing arts, dance, music, drama, catering. But um, they've done that in advance of GCSE grades and it comes to kind of July, August, September, and they find that they haven't quite got the grades necessary to, to be able to successfully go on to those courses in the first instance. All right. And what may well be the recommendation from the mainstream tutors or the mainstream program leaders is that actually um, the young person just needs an additional year or two in a little bit more of a supportive environment um, to develop their English and maths and core skills to get them ready for that mainstream environment. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to set up a young person to fit. Um, so that's the reason we have entry level qualifications um, to try and build that bridge and build that pathway to get uh, the young people that may come to us initially, even though it's not their first choice, to get them to where they want to be. All right. So provision at each site. Um, as I mentioned, the provision is slightly different at each site and therefore uh, you may wish to consider uh, the different sites relevant to either you yourself if you're a student applying or if you're a parent or carer or, you know, kind of part of the wider support network of a young person who you feel may be with us in September. So at Hoffel campus, the focus is very much on those raw um, kind of traditional land based provisions and, and kind of specialist animal care um, programs, things that are unique to a campus that is set on hundreds of acres of farmlands with an animal care centre and a fully functioning farm um, and a fully functioning equine centre as well. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. Um, what we offer as Foundation Studies or entry level qualifications that are not directly related to animal care farming etc but that do offer small incremental tastes and the opportunity for young people to develop initial basic foundation skills which will then prepare them to progress to the main qualifications maybe in a year's time maybe in two years time three years etc etc and um, so it's perfectly reasonable that we might have a student apply to us um in august or september who wants to do level one animal care and um, but actually you know hasn't hasn't um quite achieved the gcse grades that they, they've expected and so the animal care team may ask them to come and do a year with us um doing a qualification such as skills for work and life where you'll access the animal care unit and you'll do a little bit of you know looking after the small animals and looking after the, the rabbits and the hamsters um, and you'll access the farm and you'll do a bit of land-based work as well so kind of you know working with woodwork and working with you know the pigs and the sheep and the calves and all that sort of stuff trying to trying to develop those holistic skills those really broad sets of skills that are going to going to see you all right dependent upon you know wherever you, you decide to progress and it's not unusual for a student to come to us initially wanting to do animal care, but actually because of the wider stuff that they've been able to experience within foundation studies, have then kind of thought about maybe doing something else um, at, at Hoffel campus. And it really is a fantastic facility. Um, obviously, in the current circumstances, we can't do any campus tours. Um, but when uh, the lockdown kind of protocols are, are um, lifted and it is safe to do so, I'm absolutely sure the college will be making an announcement um, to you know invite those who want to come down and maybe C campus but again you know that will not happen until we're instructed to do so by the Department for Education and Government Guidance. Uh, what we do offer at Hoffel campus as well are a broader um, set of qualifications at level one including customer service employability uh, because what we do have is we do have some students who are who have had their time in education who have spent a number of years with us and who are maybe looking at moving into employment who are maybe looking at moving into volunteering or are supported internship program all right so we do have those really specialist qualifications at Hoffel and um, to prepare young people for animal care and farming and agriculture and floristry and equine and um, but we do also offer those broader qualifications that do offer a much more kind of general set of skills in order to get young people with uh, special educational needs disabilities and wider challenges ready for the world to work um at um Pete Lee campus we do offer um slightly different qualifications so qualifications that are again going to be about broad work-based skills 
um, but are also going to seek to kind of prepare students for, for progression to some of the provision at Peter Lee. So, for instance, a young person who wants to do animal care isn't going to come to foundation studies at Peter, at Peter Lee uh, because it doesn't make sense. They're not going to get access to the curriculum resources and opportunities that they would do at Hoffel. Similarly, if you have a young person who is interested in maybe doing sport long term or performing arts or media or um, business studies, then the recommendation would be that Peter Lee campus would be best served at foundation studies within that because we can look to access some of the facilities that are naturally on site at Peter Lee um, rather than those who are maybe slightly different at, at Hoffel campus. So if you're interested in animal care, floristry, those kind of those kind of subjects, you know, you're looking at Hoffel. And if you're interested in much, much uh, kind of wider subjects and, and pot potentially more traditional um, college subjects, then it would be Peter Lee campus. Um, we also have a strong focus within our curriculum on something called preparing for adulthood outcomes, PFA outcomes. Um, I've posted the link just at the bottom of the slideshow there. And essentially, you know, in a nutshell, uh, PFA outcomes are a national framework that seek to guide educators, adults, parents, carers and young people themselves. Um, to get them ready for adulthood. We realise that your young person may well be coming to us to study, to prepare for animal care, um, but if they do have special educational needs, disabilities, learning difficulties, some of those categories that we talked about earlier, if they are falling into one of those categories, then actually we have a much wider duty of care to prepare that young person for adulthood, to ensure that they are ready to live independently where possible, and um, that they are able to travel and look after themselves and, and take responsibility for their own money and their own self-care, um, as well as being able to develop relationships and friendships and all that sort of stuff as well. All right. Um, so that's just a little bit about what we do try and embed within our provision. So even though they may be, well be coming to do a bit of sport, um, to do a bit of prepare, preparation for animal care, we do have a much broader uh, set of, of subjects that we do focus on and that's reflected in our timetables so generally speaking, you know, we we uh, within the foundation studies department, if you do study with us, it's a full time program um, across three days a week. All right. And those three full days will be at a quarter past nine in the morning to around about four thirty five o'clock in the afternoon. And the reason we do three days and not five is so that we have learners on site for those big full days. Um, really important with young people with special educational needs, disabilities, um, that they have that regular frequent contact with staff and that they have a timetable which is simple, easy to follow and is kind of, you know, in line with a wider set of skills that we're trying to develop. So generally speaking, now it can change ever so slightly and I, and I don't want to get into kind of the minutiae of, you know, timetables being, you know, individually tweaked if they need to be. They can be and I'm, I'm, I'm always open to have conversations with parents, carers and students um, if they do, you know, if the timetable absolutely isn't working for them. But this model works, it's good, um, it's effective and it's fit for purpose and it gives young people a really broad set of skills that are important for wherever they want to end up so um unfortunately young people even though you come into post 16 education um, you do have to do two and a half hours of maths a week and two and a half hours of english a week now i do say unfortunately because a lot of young people do feel that because they're coming to college i'll never have to do english or maths again and um, if you have successfully achieved your gcse or your level two functional skills at those subjects um, then yes you you don't have to do uh, those qualifications um, it is a mandatory requirement set down by government in post 16 education all right um, we always have work experience within our timetable. Really important to develop skills that look towards the world of work, however far off that may seem. Um, and that involves, you know, it's very, very different for each student depending on their interest. So if we have a student who's interested in performing arts, uh, their work experience may well be helping out in the Lebetkin Theatre, which is the fully functioning theatre at the PLA campus. So we do like to try and tweak that where possible and make that relevant to each student. Uh, personal and social development, so we want to try and encourage um, you know, relationship building, friendship building, resilience, uh, what to do when things go wrong, how to cope with life, essentially, um, and life skills. So that's about kind of two to four hours per week. Everything from cooking, cleaning, self-care, opening a bank account, handling money, um, you know, being able to um, apply for you know, benefits or being able to apply for a job. Um, knowing where to go to if you need advice or guidance about things, who to speak to, who to trust, all of those sorts of things that are really, really important and are so often taken for granted in the lives of young people.
Um, we also have travel training, which is a fantastic part of our provision, uh, where young people will go out into the community using public transport, using their feet, using uh, other natural resources that are available in the community to get them from A to B. Um, really strong focus on things like um, timetabling, um, contingency planning, what to do if things go wrong, safety in the community. So who do you go to if you get lost, um, who to trust, kind of signs of danger, signs of safety, all those sorts of things. And, and travel training is one of those areas that um, really sees students make progress over the course of a full academic year. It's amazing. Um, and then lastly, um, the vocational main aim. You'll hear that potentially um, said quite a lot, main aim. Essentially, what that is, is that's the kind of bread and butter qualification. Now, that might be the qualification that's preparing them for adult, uh, preparing them for animal care or preparing them for employability or preparing them for, um, for equine. And that will depend upon um, kind of student to student. All right. Um, so just just as an overview. At Hoffle Campus, we have our main qualifications, our qualifications called Entry Skills for Work and Life, going from Entry 2 through to Entry 3, all right? And that is the broad set of qualifications, getting people ready for mainstream pursuits in animal care, equine. And, and what is studied in there depends on what the student wants, what is interested in and what they're looking to progress long term. We do have a level one called Level One Land Based Ops. Essentially, that is a really solid qualification to prepare um, students who are maybe looking to progress to agriculture, um, to, to work on the farm, uh, to progress to equine, to progress to animal care again. We do have an employability and customer services qualification at Hoffle Campus, and that is for young people who are maybe, you know, not quite ready for the world of work, but feel as though they could be ready for the world of work. At Pete Lee, um, it's slightly different. We have the NB2 um, and NB3 skills for work and life qualification again, but the content will be different. So the content will be very much maybe focused on things like painting, decorating, joinery, woodwork, metalwork, um, because we were likely to have students who are maybe looking to access our tech academy long term. All right. Um, we also have independent living skills as a qualification of both sites, uh, where students for whom uh, living independently and looking after themselves is maybe a big challenge. And that would be the kind of main focus of the curriculum. And I'm very excited that this year at Peat Lake Campus, we're going to have two brand new qualifications. First one is a level one in retail skills, uh, and that's going to be you know, a really good qualification for young people who are maybe interested in working in retail or customer service or you know, working in a shop or working in a call centre um, to think about the kind of skills that you need to think about when you're working in customer facing environments. And then lastly, but no means least, this year we do have a level one in interactive media launching at Peat Lake Campus. Um, and that is to really give young people with SEND and wider challenges the opportunity to step into a, a creative and digital and media environment um, to hopefully progress into that environment long term. We know there's a lot of research and a lot of um, insight out there that shows that when young people with special educational needs and disabilities are given the opportunity to engage in creative and digital subjects, um, that they bring something slightly differently because of the nature of their, their needs and the way they see the world, um, the way they are creative and the way they problem solve is, is something that is very inspirational. So that's, that's a little bit of a new course that's launching this year um, at Peter Lee. But again, if you've got any qualif any uh, questions about qualifications, rather, if you've got any questions about qualifications, um, then feel free to, to email me um, and we can also arrange a little bit of a phone conversation as well if you do want to have a, a more extended um, discussion. So transition. Um, now, ideally, um, it's the time of year where I would like to be inviting anybody who's interested um, on site um, at either Peter Lee or Hoffle for a bit of a tour. A bit of a taster, join a few classes, see what we're like, see what we don't like um, and get a feel for whether it's for them or not. In the current circumstances, uh, that is, you know, it's not possible, nor would it be actually safe or um, worthwhile or actually a, a very good idea. Um, all I can say to you at this moment in time is that we are constantly reviewing uh, the current situation and we are co constantly kind of you know, reflecting on at what point we need to think about alternative transition arrangements. Um, it would be wrong of me to, to give you an insight into what those may be um, because they may change um, because we are in an ever changing situation in terms of education, but also in terms of society. What I can say is that if you do have a young person who is looking to study with us as a new student in September, and you are really, really worried about the transition um, or the lack of transition because of COVID-19 and lockdown, then let's have a follow up conversation uh, via email and via telephone um, and we'll certainly be working all throughout the next six months 
um, to try and get young people that are coming to us in September ready for us and uh, to give them a little sense of, of a handover and a preparation. All right. Um, and I apologize that I can't say much more than that at this moment in time. So applying for a foundation studies place. Um, what I would say is, is if you do want to kind of get the ball rolling with that via email with me in response to this being sent out, then that's fine. Um, if you want to look on um, the Eastern College website, there is um, a little page. And if this works, then I'll be able to just um, jump. I'm not actually sure I can. Give me two seconds. No, I can't actually jump onto it. But if you go on um, to East Durham College's website and click apply, so that's hyperlinked in this presentation, you'll be able to apply through there. Um, or you can do it by phone and student services and, and register in your interest there as well. Um, what I would say is that if you do have a young person with an educational health care plan, you can send over the educational health care plan to that address there, which is ALS. So that stands for additional learning support at eastdurham.ac.uk. Um, all applications are scrutinized on the basis of need so whether we can respond to the needs of your young person or you yourself um, and whether or not um, it's you have the kind of the, the interest and the right kind of skills and right kind of um, qualifications where appropriate to access the provision there's also an age um, criteria to, to, to kind of bear in mind so generally speaking 16 to 19 unless you do have an education health care plan and that does extend your, your, your eligibility so it's not necessarily a guarantee but your eligibility to access pro 16 education a little bit further um, and all education applications within um, foundation studies in East Durham College are also scrutinized on the basis of safeguarding which means that we've got to make sure that your young person is going to be safe with us and that our young person and our staff are going to be safe with your young person as well um, nine times out of ten that's a process which is relatively straightforward but sometimes there are instances where we do just need to ask a few questions or um, you know have a little bit of a think as to whether or not our provision is right on those basis okay again feel free to email um, the the response to this if you do want to open a little bit of an email dialogue um, if you do want more information, again, there's my email address at the bottom, craig.duggan at East Durham College at eastdurham.ac.uk. Feel free to chuck me an email um, or you can call the Peter Leo Hoffel campus if you do want a little bit more advice and guidance. Um, I hope this has been useful. I hope this has maybe answered some of your questions. This isn't intended to answer all of them, but simply to start the process of you maybe... Um, getting the information that you need what i would say is even in the midst of a global pandemic do not panic all right do not panic we have lots of time to work together lots of time to start having these dialogues and start having these conversations to make sure that the provision is right whenever that may happen um, it is generally about this time of year where our inquiries really start to pick up so if you have received this you're doing all the right things um, you're bang in line with with what i'd expect in terms of a timeline um, and hopefully we'll speak soon Thank you very much, guys.